The hoverboard. Remember it? If yes, then you're old. But that also means that you're probably as disappointed as me that hoverboards never really came. Well, there are a few things that call themselves hoverboards, but come on. And do you remember the magnetic highways from Minority Report? If yes, it means that you're not quite as old and that you're a nerd. So why am I talking about such things? What the hell? You clicked on this video because it said something with superconductors. Well, room temperature superconductors are the holy grail of material science. And not only will they allow for hoverboards like in Back to the Future or magnetic cars and highways like in Minority Report, but they will allow for so much more if they can be made. That small detail. But can they be made though? Hello dear futurists, welcome to Ultra Future, the channel where we're discussing all things future related. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started. Now why would room temperature superconductors be so incredibly awesome, you certainly ask now. Well, because superconductivity basically means that a material loses all electrical resistance. If you send electricity through a copper wire, for instance, then this wire gets heated and a lot of your electricity gets lost in form of heat, which is not so nice because then, well, then you lose electrical power. And of course, that is a big problem, not only in all kinds of electronics, you certainly know what I'm talking about when you overclock your PC, but it's also a problem when you want to build huge magnetic coils for medical applications, for example, or if you want to send electricity from a power plant to the people in their homes so that they can do all kinds of productive things with that electricity, such as watching TV or playing computer games. So what would then of course be really nice to have? Exactly, no electrical resistance because if resistance would be zero, then you would lose no electrical power at all when sending electricity over large distances. You could also build much more powerful magnets, which you can then use for all sorts of incredible applications, such as particle colliders or high-tech medical scanning devices of all sorts. Now, if you cool down some conductors to extremely low temperatures of only a few degrees above absolute zero, so around minus 270 degrees Celsius or minus 454 degrees Fahrenheit for our imperial unit loving friends, well, then you lose all electrical resistance and then indeed you can send electricity without losses. But the disadvantage then is that you have to use liquefied helium, which is just stupidly expensive and keeping your machinery cooled requires very sophisticated ways of keeping that liquid helium very, very cold or else it evaporates. So therefore, some smart people were dissatisfied with that stuff and started writing some very smart looking formulas onto a board like this guy here. And then they found a new class of materials called high temperature superconductors. One class of such high temperature superconductors is called Repco rare earth barium copper oxide. Why? Because that's the chemical formula. You take a rare earth mineral such as yttrium and combine it with barium copper and oxygen and voila, you have your yttrium barium copper oxide high temperature superconductor. The only problem is that high temperature here is a very relative term. We are namely still talking about minus 196 degrees Celsius or minus 322 degrees Fahrenheit or 77 Kelvin here. Therefore, such yttrium barium copper oxide based superconductors still require liquid nitrogen cooling. So wouldn't it be super nice then to have superconductors that would work at room temperature, so around 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit? Then you could build all these amazing devices without the need of cooling. And on top, you could make use of an effect that is famous in superconducting materials, namely that they trap a magnetic field inside and then you can make them just hover. So at room temperature, you could really easily build hoverboards or hover cars on top of a magnetic road. Such things would then really become possible. Because right now, the constant need for cooling down to liquid nitrogen temperatures makes such futuristic visions unfortunately impossible. So therefore, some smart people started writing even more smart formulas onto a whiteboard but then they realized what the hell are we doing here and started going into a lab and actually started really working on different material combinations. And lo and behold, they found a room temperature superconductor. But then it turned out not so fast because they would only work at stupidly high pressures. And even that was questionable. And your room temperature superconductors are no good if you get squished to paste now, are they? So the smart people were looking around a bit more and then they found another material which promised to be the holy grail. LK99. The name stems from the original research conducted by two Korean scientists back in 1999 where they discovered this material, Lee and Kim, hence the name LK99. 
Then in 2023, the sensation was announced that they had verified that indeed this material showed superconductivity at room temperature. And even the magnetic levitation effect mentioned before, the so-called Meissner-Oxenfeld effect, could be demonstrated. But then different labs worldwide carried out follow-up analyses with LK99 samples that they synthesized, different labs all around the world, and what did they find? Well, they could not replicate the room temperature superconducting capabilities of LK99. Bummer. So no room temperature superconductivity then? It's all over folks. Go home. The video is over. Ciao. Or not. Well, believe it or not, but the story with LK99 still appears not to be over. Not long ago, two Chinese labs appear to have successfully shown superconductivity occurring in their LK99 samples. So apparently it's not quite room temperature yet, but minus 23 degrees Celsius or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. But hey, that's still a lot better than minus 196 degrees Celsius or minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. And this superconductor works at normal ambient pressures, so at one atmospheric pressure. And it has been replicated apparently by two independent labs in China. Apparently what made the difference to the regular LK99 was added sulfur. The initial LK99 was said to have been contaminated with sulfur, yet all the labs around the world who wanted to replicate this material had no added sulfur. So maybe the key for reaching room temperature superconductivity was adding sulfur. If that is confirmed, then, dear futurist friends, wow. Then simply wow, because our world is going to be transformed. But since we have been disappointed before, let's first wait for definitive results. However, if this really is confirmed, then we might be able not only to build hoverboards, okay, ideally then you should use it in Alaska or in the deepest of winter, but better than nothing, am I right? Same with the magnetic levitation highways. But imagine all the possibilities, how the world could be transformed even with an almost room temperature superconductor that works at minus 23 degrees Celsius. Maybe the temperature can be raised more to room temperature, so to 23 degrees Celsius, and then it would be possible to have lossless electrical wires. Imagine sending electricity over vast distances, hundreds or even thousands of kilometers without any losses. Huge and strong magnetic coils for all sorts of applications, such as future fusion reactors and many applications we didn't even think of yet. So if this new sulfur added LK99 superconductor is really confirmed, then the future is going to be quite amazing indeed. If you are a futurist like me who is fascinated with room temperature superconductors, then please like and subscribe since it would greatly help this new and small channel and see you in the future.